It's just a small video, it's quite blowy. I've just left that beautiful place behind where I felt my sister was waiting for me at the top of the hill when I climbed up Stout Lane. And she walked with me through that lovely area of trees to that little lake where the horses normally gather. I felt her so strong with me then. And here, when I look round at this beauty, I know she she's all over here. Everything about her is here. The hills, the heather. I'm just doing a little bit of weaving in and out. There's like a burial mound there, see? There's another path up here. There's another path there, see? Yeah, I'll have to edit some of it out, but I do feel her so present here. It's like people say, don't leave it too long. People are a long time gone. And it's true. But we're, I reckon we're both as good as each other, not rich, going out of our way. Now here's a, anyway, let's get back to here. There's like a burial mound there. And here you've got a watering hole for the horses. Here, yeah, a watering hole. There's all Exmoor over there. I'll take a picture of this in a second. The trick point's up there. I'll just take a picture of them here. Let's have a look. Where is it? There it is. Will's neck, this is called. Children have stopped climbing on it now. I'll just take a picture of this mound with the lake. Looks like a shape of a heart, doesn't it? All right, this is um, the trig point. World's neck looks like it's more exposed than usual. It just looks a bit like it's been lifted out the ground or something. I mean, it might have always been like that, I can't remember. God, we were here already. I'm quite surprised actually. I mean, the hard bit was the hill up. I am quite surprised I've got here like I have. Yeah. I am. We'll be at Triscombe Stone in a minute, and before you know it, we'll be. I reckon we'll be at Croken by two, at this rate. Do you? Yeah. And there's, the weather's good. I mean, it's warm, it's sunny, and there's an absolute brilliant breeze. The breeze is godsend. And here we've got it. I can't remember it being like so exposed like that, but maybe it was. I'd have to look up the old photos. The other week we were up at Batch Beacon, Beacon Batch, on the Mendips. Now we're on the Quantox. And uh, it's an offence to damage it. They're giving, even giving your phone no information. It's just that they say it's a. But look at it. it looks to me like it should have been sunk in the ground more. No plaque. Just warning people not to damage it. That's not mention of Will's neck. Right, folks. Right over there is Dalbra Hill Fort. 
So I've walked through and round. A long avenue of trees that we're going to do in a minute. Going from Truscombe Stone, which is just down there, to over there, which is Crocombe. We're just going to take our time and then we'll see whether we do want to do, because it's not too bad the weather, it isn't as hot as I thought, whether we do want to do Bitnoller or whether you want to go back early, get an earlier bus back, because you would have done all this. Right over there, I'll try and zoom in, there's Hinkley Point getting bigger and bigger all the time. I don't know if it shows. It's all over there. It'd be very faint, I think. It's in the mist. Yeah, there we are. That's that one there. That's, that's B, Hinkley B there. Hinkley A, I think, is there, and they're taking them apart and they're building round silver domes. I've seen them before, they've probably covered them up now, but they were the ones housing the nuclear reactor which hasn't been activated at all yet. Then you've got great wood and you've got all the walks in and out of this wood here. You've got Dead Woman's Ditch where somebody in the last 30 odd years murdered a woman. Other people have been buried out there apparently. And then we look back right over there. There's a path going up a hill. That's Lydiard Hill right over there where a lot of people come and park their cars there and then walk to here on a clear day you can see further afield you know the Mendip Hills probably from here I can see a little bit up into the Ink Bristol Channel and on a clear day maybe you could see I don't know Western possibly Burnham on Sea you can't at the moment it's very very misty you won't even see steep home it's very misty actually, but they did say there was going to be, in fact it's come mistier. It could even be smog. They've also said there's some desert dust arriving from Africa, North Africa, and this looks like it, this plume of dust that is supposed to be coming, or sand even. It really is uh, looking, well I, I don't know if it's pollutant or not, but... Uh, it certainly is quite evident here. Right then folks, I'm now going to take some photos and then I'm going to walk down that path to Triscombe Stone. And everything's got significance. This place is filled with history. Anglo-Saxon battles took place up here. Alfred the Great apparently has been up here. People earlier than him. Going back many, many, many times, many, so there's lots of, the Quantock Hills are really like a big giant burial landscape. That's what you could say these are. A giant burial landscape. Those green fields over there, that's where a massive battle took place in the past and it's all recorded. I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the battle. But apparently it was. And these are all battle routes. They call these marching routes. A lot of these, um, and up through the trees and everything. Once again, that's why I chose this route to keep cool. I just hope I don't get too cool. Over and out. Now I've walked all across those. See those green fields? There's various humps and bumps. All burial mounds. They've all got names. Little and large. They've got, I can't remember all the names now, but right in the far corner there's also Hurley Beacon. And of course you can't see it. There's the big beacon. There's Holford Glen. You can't see any of that. It's at the other side of, over there. But we'll be walking up. I'm going to be walking up through that avenue of trees all the way along to um, Procom Gate and that's where I will look at the time I will decide what to do but I've got a strong feeling I'm going to go down and walk through Crocom Village have a look round the church get an ice cream if I can and go and get the bus and I think that'll be plenty I do a lot of uh, Bicknoller 
So I, I think I'm just going to do that, I think. I will be walking down through the road, though, because then I can walk through the village. If I go down close to Hurley Beacon, I will, and it will just be all cross fields and that, and I don't know if there's cows out. I tell you, this past year, and I've gone quick, you know, because it only feels like I did Hurley Beacon and then did Downsbury Hill for it, like a couple, say, eight months ago. It's not as well over a year ago. But I haven't done this walk for several years. Um, I've done it since I've lost Alberta. That's when I first started using trains and buses. So it could have been 2020. Yeah, it might only be three years ago. I last walked here in the mist. It's when I didn't have a car anymore. I had to find other ways to be able to come out on these hills, and I did. And it, like I say, it's cheaper than driving. It's quicker, if not the same depending where I want to go. But of course the benefits of having your vehicle, there's no pressure and you can keep change of clothing and all that sort of thing. My lovely old Berta, I must say though, whenever I go to Holford I half expect her to be parked in the car park there, waiting for me. So, Yeah, you can, I can't remember, the bit, there's big and little hump um, here. I, I can't remember the, the exact name. It's because I'm not over enough. But uh, I've got it all 